I want to introduce the idea of forces and the description of motion through Newton's laws of motion. This is called the study of dynamics. Dynamics is what causes motion and the description of motion is kinematics. So if someone wants to talk to you about kinematics, they're just talking about accelerations and velocities and positions. But dynamics involves forces, and we'll see later momenta and energy. Uh, so Newton's ideas about motion were not the first time that somebody tried to describe uh, dynamics. Uh, actually, up uh, till Newton's time, dynamics was, uh, was dominated by Aristotle's ideas. And Aristotle thought that... Uh, Essentially, you could, you could describe what Aristotle thought about dynamics is uh, force is equal to mass times velocity. The classic example is if you've got a cart being pulled by a donkey, okay, that cart is only moved when the donkey is exerting a force, when the donkey pulls on it. And if the uh, donkey pulls on it, it moves at some velocity v, and when the donkey stops pulling, the cart stops, and that's the end of the story. So to Aristotle, it made perfect sense that force is equal to mass times velocity. Another example that caused a lot of problems for Aristotle was that someone said, well, what happens if you take an arrow and you shoot it into the air, and it flies off at some velocity v, until it falls to the ground. Back in Aristotle's time, they would say that it fell to the ground because the Earth is the center of the universe and all things want to be at the center of the universe, so everything is pulled towards the center of the Earth. But we'll ignore that for the moment. But the question would be, why is it this arrow flies after it's left the bow? It makes sense that when it's on the bow, it's being forced out uh, as a force to keep it moving, but how does it move when it's in the air? And Aristotle thought about this a while, and he said his reply was that it has to do with air resistance. That is, when the arrow goes through the air, it pushes the air out from around it, and those, that air goes around and pushes the tail feathers and keeps that arrow flying through the air. That's not a very good explanation, but that's what physics was up until the time of Newton. Uh, Newton realized that it's not appropriate to talk about forces equal to mass times velocity. Newton was the one who inserted the idea that a force causes an object to accelerate. Okay, I'd like to start off with some definitions. First of all, mass. Mass is a fundamental quantity. It cannot be defined in terms of anything more basic than itself. Although currently there are experiments going on to try to try to show how mass itself comes from some interaction with a particle called a Higgs particle. Uh, it's a fundamental quantity. It's measured in terms of kilograms in units of kilograms. Now you can define kilograms in terms of an operational definition. Uh, and it, it's just the amount of stuff. That's as good a definition as you need to handle mass. All right, Mass is not weight. And weight is not mass. Mass is a property is measured in kilograms and weight is measured in pounds. Okay. Uh, there's accelerations. We'll talk a lot about accelerations more. And that has units of length per time squared. That's a, a derived uh, quantity. And then there are forces. And forces are also derived quantities, uh, and we normally use units of newtons. 
That's the, the metric unit is the Newton, and the pound is the normal English unit. A Newton, I call a Newton a Big Mac because it's about a quarter of a pound. So that's a good way to remember the relationship between those two. Uh, and we will, uh, we actually define forces in terms of Newton's second law, or one argument can be made that forces are defined in terms of Newton's second law. So let's talk about what Newton's three laws are. There's a law, the first law is the so-called law of inertia. The second law is the one F is equal to MA, and F and A are both vectors. Uh, this is, this is, can be considered a definition of force or a definition of how acceleration occurs. And then the third law is the so-called law of action and reaction. And the average person on the street knows how to take, can refer to these laws and has the slightest idea about how they're applied or what they really mean. For instance, this is an especially bad name for this law. Okay. Let's start off by talking about inertia. The law of inertia says that if you have a mass, and let's take a mass, and it's moving with some velocity, then that mass will continue to move with that velocity as long as it is not acted upon by a net force. It's a very careful legal statement. A mass will move at constant V until acted on by a net force. Okay, where are the legalities in this? Where do the lawyers come in? Okay, well, constant V, what does that mean? Well, remember, velocity has two parts, has speed, and direction. So having constant velocity means that the speed is constant and it's going in a straight line, same direction. Alternatively, the velocity can change by changing the speed but going in a constant direction. Or you could stay at the same speed and change your direction, like a car going around a corner on a street. Uh, or you can change both at the same time, like a car accelerating as it goes around a corner in the street. So the speedometer is changing and the direction is changing. So remember, you can change the velocity in several ways. And then it will go at this constant velocity until acted upon by a net force. That doesn't mean no force. You can have a mass going at a constant velocity and have all sorts of forces acted upon it, but the sum of them has to be equal to zero. Okay? So we sometimes write this as the net force is equal to the sum of all these as yet undefined forces that act upon the object. Okay? So that's the law of inertia. 